Hey everyone, it's Allison Haikila. Thank you so much for joining me today. You might be saying to yourself, what in the world is happening here? Well, <laughs> we are going to have a blast today. So, you know, you guys watch YouTube. You, you watch YouTube to, because maybe you have somebody that you enjoy watching. Maybe you're looking to learn something new. Um, and then within that, you probably have your favorites. You know, if you're a paper crafter, I can think of five off the top of my head that probably every paper crafter knows. Um, you know, same with mixed media. Um, if you're into gel printing, you probably have some favorites. I can think of several. Well, one of those people is the inspiration for today's video. There's a woman named Shauna and her YouTube channel is called Create and Made and I will be sure to tag her and link her below. She, every one of her videos blows my mind. Like blows my mind in a way that I can't recall another crafter really doing in a long time. Like there's inspiration everywhere and I always love seeing, you know, my favorites doing something that I hadn't seen before. But Shauna is ridiculous. Like she's so creative and clever and explains things amazingly and makes such cool gel prints. And I'm telling you, if you haven't seen Shauna before, you have got to head over to her channel after you watch this video <laughs> and see all of the spectacular things that she's doing. And I can assure you that this is not the only time I'm going to be referencing her because she's done so many things that I want to do myself. Um, and she's just amazing. So that brings me to all of this stuff on my table here. So I've got a lot of stuff with texture and I, I mentioned gel printing, right? So what does that tell you? Well, you know, this stuff here, I don't want to put paint on my hypostes pot. Look at how pretty my hypostes is. I don't want to put paint on this pot, right? I borrowed this Lego piece from my kids. I don't want to put paint on here. That's going to be horrendous to clean. I have a cup. I have a clip, a hair clip. I have a skeleton hand because, you know, Halloween's my jam. I have this cool basket. If you've watched my, my lives, you've seen this basket before. I use it all the time to hold my supplies, but look at how great that texture is. And then I've got um, a magnifying headlamp piece that, that I got from my son. Look at this texture. It's like super squishy and fabulous and I'd never want to get paint on here. And then I have one of my sketchbooks from a long time ago. Okay, so what do all these things have in common? Besides the texture being really cool, I don't want to get paint or ink or anything else on them. So, guys, what Shauna came up with is going to blow your mind. You ready for this? Play-Doh. She uses Play-Doh on things that have great texture, but you may not necessarily want to get paint on or ink, or whatever whatever medium you work with. I'm just rolling this out. Now, this is old Play-Doh, <laughs> so I should really get some new Play-Doh, but I'm just using what was in the house. I'm just rolling this out. This is just a, a roller from, like, Sculpey or something. It's just a clear acrylic piece. Okay, so we've got this. I'm going to trim this off. I'm just going to get rid of some of this excess here. We'll use it later. Just to have a sort of rectangle. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So we've got this piece here. And now we can take my pot, for example, and just carefully press this in like so. That didn't work at all <laughs> because this Play-Doh is old. Okay, let's try it again without damaging my plant and dropping soil everywhere. And if I don't get it on this one, then I'll just use something that's got more dimension because this is not super super raised, but I just wanted to show you as an example. Nah, it's there a little bit. We can try it. 
I don't know how well it's going to work. You can see it in the shine. Maybe we'll use something else, but let's go with this because I can get a good impression with this. If this doesn't work, then I'm just going to need to get some Play-Doh that's new. There we go. Check that out. All right, perfect. You want to be careful with it because if you start to stretch it and pull it, then it's going to alter the shape. Although that could be a good thing too. So now I'm going to get all of these things off of my desk, grab my gel plate and my paint, and we'll make some prints. All right, we've got some fluid acrylic here from, we have some fluid acrylic here, I should say, from Golden and DecoArt. Use what you have. I, I really like using fluid acrylics on my gel press plate, um, but you can use crafter's acrylic. You can use really whatever you want. Um, this is just what I happen to prefer. You can use heavy body. I'll be pulling some heavy body out to lift the prints. Um, and then this is just a brayer from Speedball. The gold that's around the perimeter here is just from one of my mono print Mondays and hopefully we'll get it to pull and it'll look fab. I've got a bit of a something happening here. Let's pull that off. That pyro orange really took over. That's okay. That is all right. Okay, so now we're gonna take this and we're going to press it in here. Check that out. Oh, that's going to be cool. <laughs> I love when stuff like this works. And I, I really like that it's not perfect. I prefer grungier prints, so this is going to be really, really dope. Okay. Add some here. And a little here. And, you know, what's nice is that it's malleable, so, you know, if I want to get rid of this line here or a piece of it, I can kind of bend it a little bit and just see, get that one spot that I want. Okay. So now the trick is that you've got to let this dry. If you don't let this dry, then, um, when you put another layer of color on top, it's going to wind up messing this print up. So we're going to let this hang out. What I like to do is I grab typically another piece of acrylic and I just do one of these for a while. Um, I also like to work on a second plate so that this way while one is drying, I got another thing going on, but we're not doing that today. I'm going to just pause my video, let this dry, and then we'll add some more color to this and pull the print. Okay, the sheen from this is gone, which indicates to me that it's dry. I'm touching it and it's not coming up. This is a grungy print, so if a little bit pulls up before I want it to, that's okay but I don't obviously want to mess up the whole thing and lose all of these cool dots that we have going on. So now we're going to, and you can add a lot of layers to this if you want to, but I'm keeping it simple because it's really about using the Play-Doh to get cool prints from things that you wouldn't want to put paint on. Okay. So if you want to go, you know, full on and add a bajillion layers to this and whatever, that's cool. I plan on doing that at some point, but not today. Today, I really just want to focus on getting cool prints with things we pulled with the Play-Doh. All right, this is cool. And on the side here, you can see that I'm working on a roll-off print. These are sometimes some of my favorites because you just get such cool textures and layers and things like that. So we're going to quickly grab a fresh piece of paper. This is just copy paper. I'm gonna lay this down. Rub it really well. You can let this sit. If it's cool to the touch, it might not be ready to go. Um, once it's warmed up, not hot, you know, it's just, it's no longer cool. It's more like room temperature. Then you know it's ready. And you can leave this stuff overnight. You can leave it for an hour or two, whatever. It's not gonna damage anything. See, this isn't ready to come up. You see that there? So I'm gonna work on this for a couple of minutes, let it sit, and then we'll pull the print. Okay, this is pretty ready to go. There's going to be some bits left over, but that's okay because it'll be in our next print then. Check this out. Oh, 
This is yummy. You can see some of the pink left from my last monoprint from monoprint Mondays. Look at that. That is so nice. Loving this. Oh, okay. All right. So now we've got this Play-Doh that has this Lego thing happening and I'm done with it. So what do we do? This is it guys. That's what you do. You don't have to worry about the paint getting into anything. It's going to just kind of get absorbed by the Play-Doh. And then you can just roll out a new piece. And eventually you'll wind up, you know, trashing this. But Play-Doh is a pretty inexpensive tool um, as things go. So you can just keep rolling it out, get a, you know, one of those packs where you get a few colors all at once. It doesn't matter what color plater you're using. Obviously this has red and blue and whatever. Now we're making purple. Um, the color doesn't matter. It'll be fine. Okay. I'm going to flip this over, roll this out. See, you could see the paint in here, but it's totally okay. It's not even getting onto my my roller. All right. So now we're going to use something else. I might actually leave the shape like this. I kind of like that it's organic and not a rectangle or a square or anything because it'll add to the grungy look we're going, kind of going for. Okay. So how about, <laughs> I'm going to use these. Now, again, my Play-Doh's old, so I don't know how great it's going to work. I really need to get some new Play-Doh. I just kind of went in my kid's room and took stuff that was, I don't know, oh, it's pretty old. But we're going to try this and see how this looks. What's good is that I can get my fingers in here and kind of press in here really good. This is like a foam. It's a pad for um, your forehead so that you have comfort when you're wearing these. I need to get myself a pair of these because the ones that I have are not as bougie as this. I use these for when I'm making my silver jewelry. Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. That's cool. So we'll add some more. I'm just going to kind of offset it, push it. But I wouldn't want to get paint on these, right? And to clean them off, forget it. I don't want to deal with that. This is looking cool. It's imperfect. I like it. And I'm sure that if you already use a gel press or any type of, you know, gel plate, um, you already look for textures everywhere. You probably have opened your eyes to things in ways that you may not have before, um, before you started making these model prints, right? Look at that. That's cool. Okay. And look, there's nothing on here. Nothing at all. Okay, so now you have a way like, oh, that lampshade is really cool, but I can't take a print of that. Now you can. Now you just take some Play-Doh and you can totally get a print of your lampshade. <laughs> it's so crazy to think of that though, right? It's like, do you want to get that? Yeah, because the texture is fantastic. All right, we got some green gold. I love this color. I use it so much. Okay, that's plenty of paint. Just going to kind of move these colors around a little bit. All right. Filling up this roll off print because you can use this for stamping on and die cutting and you know, all sorts of cool stuff. You can stencil on top of it later on. All right, so now we've got our Play-Doh. I'm gonna push this in. Oh, look at that. That's fun. And you know, there's so much Play-Doh in a canister, you can easily just make a few texture pieces at once and do different things. So if you don't want to just have, you know, these lines, you can, you could have saved like the Lego thing from before and, and made something new and had a couple of things going. But I think that this is cool. All right. So now again, we've got to let this dry. Let me show you how this looks right now. You can see that it's shiny. I'm sorry for that glare, 
but I want you to see the shine. That's how you know you can't pull the print completely right now. You'll just wind up messing it up if you add more paint right on top. Again, if you want to do that, like if say I don't like this area, I can start rolling new paint into it and it'll be gone. But I like how this looks so far. So I'm gonna just let this dry until there's no more shine and then we'll pull our print. Okay, this is nice and dry. So now I've got some primary magenta and I'm gonna pull um, the bright aqua color or the teal from before as well because it's my favorite. This is just a heavy body studio acrylic from Blick. I really wanna get like every color that they have because they're gorgeous. And I don't have a very wide variety of colors in fluid acrylics. I mean, I'm looking at what I've got right now and there's probably a good 30 colors, but they're not super different from each other. Like I don't have a light pink, right? Or I don't know. I'm missing a bunch of greens and there's nothing wrong with that. I can make the color myself, obviously, but you know, sometimes you just want to have it ready to go. All right. So now I'm going to start a new roll off print. This already looks cool. Put this here. I'm going to grab the piece of paper that we had from before. And this is one of the reasons I like to use um, my plate on a piece of acrylic because now I can put this right next to it and make sure that I don't get on top of it accidentally or if I need to line something up you know if I'm doing multi layers of a print but at different steps say I want to put down um, a layer of yellow to start and then I want to line it up because I've got my first textured layer that I want to put on top you know by having it on the acrylic I can flip it over and make sure that I have it in the right place <sighs> this is looking good Yeah. Seriously, that's so cool. Oh, I am loving these. These colors are ridiculous. The texture is insane. Okay, should we do more? We should do more. Let's get something else. I'm going to roll up my piece of Play-Doh. I'm going to roll it out into a new piece, and then I'll grab a new texture. All right, I've got my Play-Doh rolled out and I thought that we'd try using the cup. Now the texture on this is a bit deceiving. It's not quite as raised as you might think, but we're gonna see. Again, because this Play-Doh is old, I think I've said that like 15 times already, it might not make the best impression because it's a little stiff, but we'll see. That's actually not so bad. I think that that's kind of cool. All right. I think you can see that in the video. Let's see what it looks like up close. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. All right, so now we're going to bring this back. Move this off to the side. Let's play with some, some sap green. I love sap green. If you watch Bob Ross, you know he uses sap green a lot. It's just such a nice green. I had been trying to get it for a while, but it was sold out. And then when I saw it, I was so happy. I'm kind of a color fanatic. Like I just, I just love seeing colors and learning about colors and color theory and all of that stuff. Going back to the green gold and let's roll this out. Look at that sap green. Oh, and it really pops with the green gold. It's just so pretty. Okay, so now we're gonna take this. This reminds me of like those metal pyramids that are on clothing. I know I've got a lot of clothes with those pyramids. Okay, again, I kept the shape of the Play-Doh kind of organic. I didn't trim it down because I don't mind if the edges are a little wonky. All right, that's not as great as I would like. It's cool, but it doesn't really show the shape. I'm gonna try pressing a little less and see what happens. That's another thing, you know, depending on how much pressure you give. I mean, it looks cool on here. Oh, you know what we could do? Maybe. Let's see. Nope. The Play-Doh really holds the paint, so it's not really going to release it, but that's okay. 
So depending on how much pressure you give to anything, really, when you're doing this, it's going to kind of alter what you have going on. So this is all right. I mean, it's not the most interesting, but it might look cool when it's done. So now we need to let this dry again. I grabbed the piece of Lego again, and I, I made a new mold, I guess, of it, because I think that I want to add a little bit more to this. I, I know I said before that I was going to keep things super simple, but uh, I, I don't know. The bug hits, and then all of a sudden I want to do more things. I can't help it. I'm going to just kind of add a little bit of this. What is this color? Primary magenta. Just here and there. And then I'm going to take my Lego mold and just just a little bit. I don't want to take over from what we did before, but hopefully you can see those circles a little bit. All right, got to let this dry and then we'll pull it again with the bright aqua green because it's so gorgeous and it really makes these colors pop. Okay, I'm impatient and I don't want to wait anymore. So I'm going to grab some of this Hansa yellow again. And the bright aqua green. This top layer, when you're doing a pull, like your final layer, it does not need to be thick. You kind of want that layer to almost be translucent. You want to almost be able to see that print underneath. And if you do see it, like you see how you see the circles here? I hope you can see that. That's good. You don't want it to be too thick because you might not get those layers below to pull up. I don't want to mix this too much because I like what's happening here. Okay, I need a new piece of paper. I've got two. Okay this down and you want to work quickly on this you want to make sure you get that paper down after it's down you can do whatever you want to clean stuff up you want to put things away that's fine but you want to get the paper on here once you have that top layer on because if it starts to dry you're not going to be able to pull a good print or you'll only pull part of it so I have to separate this oh I got a little bit of a tear this is my roll off from before we can totally add more layers to this if we want to okay just kind of letting this hang out. You should also not leave your brayer face down because you could get a dent in it. I have a bad habit of leaving it face down as I'm working. Try not to do that. This has to sit some more. I'm going to let this sit. I'm going to, meanwhile, um, make a new mold with something. Ooh, you know what might be cool? Mm, maybe not. I took my phone case off because when I film, I can't have my phone case on my phone. Um, I thought this would be good, but it's a little too thin. And I think with the fact that this Play-Doh is old, it's not really going to work. But you see, there's textures everywhere. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make a new one while this is drying. Okay, this is ready to go. I made a new piece over here. I'll show you what I did for that in a moment. Oh, Look at that. That's fun. So the cup didn't really give the same effect that I was expecting. Um, I was kind of thinking that it was going to give me more of that pyramid look, but it didn't. But I still really like it. And with the addition of the circles from the Lego piece, I think that that's really cool. There's a lot of neat stuff happening. I don't love this area, but if I were to make this into a card, I can just chop this off. Or I can put like a focal image right on top and then you won't even see it. But the rest of this is looking really cool. All right, so here, let's see if I can pick this up carefully without destroying it. Okay, so with this, I just used my sketchbook. I went in with the coils one direction and then I turned it and did it the other way. And that's what that is there. Really simple just an unexpected way to get some texture. Um, let's start with the, the Hansa yellow this time. And maybe, maybe that primary magenta too. I'm really digging this color. Wind up getting some 
orange tones in here, but that's okay. Work that up top and then come in with the primary magenta and see what we get here. All right. And now we're gonna take this and just put it in. Oh, that's neat. And I'm gonna want it to go in different directions. I don't want it to be the same all the way down. I think it makes for a more interesting print if you turn it a little bit. And then, you know, there's more yellow up here than down here. So if you have some color on your object, whatever it is, like I pulled the yellow here, and then if I want to put it down here, you might wind up with some yellow here. Does that make sense? But the Play-Doh kind of holds on to everything, so it might not happen. But with other things that you use, oh look, see? That has more yellow because there was more yellow on here, so it worked. All right, cool. I'm digging that. Can you tell I'm excited, you guys? <laughs> Apologies if you don't want a long video today. You can you can speed things up if you want to, but originally I was thinking that I would do a voiceover, but I feel like you'll learn more if you watch this in real time, with the exception of watching things dry. But yeah, so that's gonna take a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna do that, let that dry, and then again, don't get sick of this color because it's gorgeous. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. All right, this is dry. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to this one at the top. Again, this layer does not need to be thick. You don't want it to be really thick. And then I'll get my favorite down here again. Okay, now one thing to keep in mind is I'm not gonna just roll this through. I don't know if you've been watching how I brayer this out. I don't wanna just roll it through. I wanna kind of pick it up and kind of start to coat my brayer with that color. That's why I kind of spread it out a little bit and not just glob it in one spot. Start to coat the brayer and then pull it out, uh, roll it out. Same thing with this. We're gonna to start to coat the brayer and roll it out. Because if you keep rolling over the same area over and over again, you'll wind up lifting that paint up. And unless that's the, the goal, you're not gonna be happy. All right, so I'm gonna flip this over. Again, this is why we've got it on this piece of acrylic. And then we can flip it back. This over here is looking like a sunset on a beach, right? We can turn this into a beach here. We've got some waves happening. Mm, maybe throw some birds in the sky. That's why I really like roll-off prints. You can get some cool stuff happening. Oh, this one pulled beautifully. Look at that. Got a little bit of grunge left from this print. See that? See the sap green in here? That's from this print. That is fantastic. I love that. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. Should we do some more? Yeah, because I've got the skeleton hand, I've got the hair clip, and I've got the basket. All right, I'm gonna roll this out, get this ready. Maybe I'll do two things on one piece of Play-Doh at the same time, or maybe I'll just separate them. Gotta get that skeleton hand going. All right, I'm gonna roll this out. Okay, so here I used my hair clip. Okay, and then here we've got the skeleton hand because I, I needed to try it. We gotta see how that's gonna look. I'm pretty excited about that. We'll use them together. If I can get this up off the table carefully. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna do some ultramarine violet this time. And a little bit of manganese blue hue. All right. Again, see how I'm kind of coating my brayer? That's a pretty thin layer, that's okay. 
going to take the hair clip piece. All right, that looks good. And now I'm going to take the hand. Let's see how this works. Oh, yeah. Okay. This should not take long to dry because um, it's a really thin layer. I hope the hand works because if it does, I'm going to wind up using it um, again at another point when I'm not filming. I don't, I might have pushed it in too much because you really don't see any of the knuckles or anything like that, but it's just a first try experiment. This is almost dry. Almost. Okay, I'm going to pull it with a fluid acrylic this time, just so that you can see that you can actually use fluids to pull your prints if you want to. I just like using the heavy body for it. There's a really thin layer of paint on that first, that first layer, so I really want to be careful to not over brayer because if I do, we're gonna lose the whole thing. That's happened to me before. Okay. Not gonna be a whole lot of supplies in the description box below, um, because it's really whatever you've got laying around, some Play-Doh and your favorite paints. Or you could use, you know, ink pads or whatever you like, but um, it's really a matter of finding things around your your home that you want to use to get some texture. I have a feeling this one's not going to be great. I think that everything was just a little too thin and dried too quickly, but we'll see. Okay. All right. That's, that's still neat. We can totally isolate part of this and still get something cool for a card front or whatever. That's fine. I'm okay with this. Not what I was looking to get, but I think it's still cool. All right. Not a fail. Not a fail. We've still got this grunge happening on here, which is okay. Um, I think that I want to go back in with my primary magenta. Oh, I didn't show you what I did while I was waiting for that to dry. So I put the Play-Doh on this basket. And look at how cool that is. Loving this. This is going to be our last print, you guys. And then I want, let's go with a different blue. Let's do primary cyan. Okay. You can see that there's still lines left from um, the mold, I guess, that I made with the, what was that? My hair clip, my hair clip. I'll try not to mess that up because I kind of like that. It's really nice that you can manipulate this how you want. If you want a certain area or if you want to bend things to fit in a spot, you can totally do that. You just don't want to stretch things too much unless you want to really alter the look of the object. All right. Okay, again, we're gonna let this dry and we'll pull our last print. Okay, I've got the Hansa yellow light. I think that I pushed too hard with this piece. Can you see all that paint in here? I think I should have had a lighter touch. I shouldn't have pushed so hard. So I think that we may not get the best results from this one as far as making it look like the basket, but it'll still be cool. Okay. If you've stuck with this this whole time, thank you. I appreciate it. I hope that you are inspired. Please make sure that you check out Shauna's YouTube channel because she's just so talented. She's got so many great ideas. Okay. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I'd love it if you did. I would appreciate it.
Okay. Oh, look at how cool this looks already, you guys. <laughs> I'm excited. I hope you're excited too. I gotta go get some more Play-Doh so that I have stuff that's a little fresher. Look at that. We don't even really need to wait for this one to kind of set up. It's just, it's pulling nicely already. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. Look at how neat this looks from the print before. That is very nice. Shall we take a look at all the prints? Let's do that. So of course we've got some nice looking roll-offs here. Where are my other ones? This could still use some layering, but it's cool. That could use a little bit more, but it's getting there. I'm really happy with this one. Okay, and then here is what we did before that. This is with the sketchbook coil. This was the Lego and the cup. This is just the Lego. And this was the, um, the headpiece, the magnifying headlamp. That's what that was, the interior part. I love these, you guys. I hope that you did too. I know that this was a long video, but I, again, I really thought that it was important to show you this stuff in real time. And this was the skeleton hand and the hair clip. So cool. All right. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that you learned some things. I hope you're inspired. Go get yourself some Play-Doh. Go start making some prints. And I will see you guys all very soon. Be well. Stay safe. Peace out.